Welcome to Roswell United Methodist Church Online. My name is Marian Brown, one of the associate pastors, and this is our on-demand version of the sermon that will be preached on this Sunday morning. And please know that our Sunday services will be live streamed beginning at 9 a.m. for the contemporary service and 11.15 for the traditional service. If you would like to have the entire worship experience on demand, that will be available on Monday morning. We appreciate you being a part of our online community and we invite you to be active and participate through your giving. And so we thank you for your support and your generosity. Before we listen to this Sunday sermon, let's have a moment of prayer. Gracious and holy Lord, we ask that you remind us that wherever we are, we are on holy ground. And so may you help us make space. So may we receive a message that you have for us in this moment. Be in our hearts so that it's open. Be in our ears so that they are open and be a part of our lives so that we are open to receive a challenge and an invitation. Work within us now and all around us so that we may know your presence and we may feel it fully. Through a moment now of words and scripture, speak to us, amen. Let's listen to this Sunday sermon. This morning I'll be reading from 2 Corinthians chapter 13 and I'll be reading verses 11 through 14. And this is what it says. Finally, brothers and sisters, rejoice, mend your ways, be comforted, be like-minded, live in peace, and the God of love and peace will be with you. Greet one another with a holy kiss. All the saints greet you. The grace of the Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with you all. Pray with me. Jesus, it's your spirit that's here among us now. May we never take it for granted. But draw us close to you, that we might know your strength, your life, living in and through us. It's in Christ's name we pray. Amen. Years ago, John Trent and Gary Smalley wrote a book called The Blessing. And in this book, they talked about the the Father's blessing throughout the Old and New Testament. And that the blessing was used to transfer approval. The blessing was used to transfer not only approval, but to acknowledge acceptance and identity and confer it on to the, the children. And they are psychologists, so they went on to say that that's what's needed today is the Father's blessing. Well, so why am I, I, I reading this verse right here? Well, the Apostle Paul wrote this, and he definitely sees himself as the father of the church there in Corinth. He started the church and he's written, we know at least three letters to the church, two of which we still have. And in the beginning of that first letter, 1 Corinthians 4 verse 15, he says, in Christ Jesus, I became your father through the gospel. He sees himself very much as the the father of this church. He says that he sees himself. And here at the end of 2 Corinthians, it's the very, very last verses of 2 Corinthians, he confers his blessing. He transfers that acceptance. He transfers that that approval. He transfers that identity onto the church. And, And I think we would all do well to see exactly how the the blessing is transferred. Yes, from, from father to children, but also mothers. Brothers, sisters, sons, daughters, friends. It's that blessing 
That blessing that builds up. It's that blessing that gives power. It's that blessing that the first thing that the blessing does is it acknowledges God's presence. And that's exactly what Paul does here. Finally, brothers and sisters, rejoice. And it's, it's in the praise. It's in the rejoicing. It's in the giving of thanks that he acknowledges the love of God and the peace of God. And that's the first thing that a, that a blessing does. It acknowledges that God's presence is there. Second thing that, that a blessing does is it, it's to be spoken. That it's never, a blessing is never one that's just felt or conferred by, uh, you know, warm f- feelings. That it's spoken. That the blessing is, is to be spoken. John Trent told a story about when he played football, that the football coach saw potential in him, but because he saw potential in him, that he would ride him and and ride him hard, that he was tough on him. And one day he had missed a block in practice and the coach came over, just chewed him out, sent him over to stand on the sidelines with the players that never got to play. And that's when he said to one of the other players, he said, I wish he'd He'd lay off and quit riding me so hard. That's when the other player said, don't say that. It's when he quits talking to you that he's given up on you. Well, very often it is, we don't know what we think until we see what we say. And always others don't know what we're thinking until we see what we say. It's not enough to think a blessing or to feel a blessing or or wish a blessing, that it has to be spoken. And that is a part of the blessing throughout the Bible. And that's what Paul is doing here. That he's conferring that approval, that acceptance, that identity by what he he says. He's not just feeling it or thinking it. But it also isn't, you know, everything you've done is perfect. No, Paul says right here, mend your ways. And if you, you, you read these letters that he wrote to that church in Corinth, he, he rides them. He's hard on them. There's some things they've done. The folks have come to church drunk, and that's not something that he says is a good thing. That they've worked hard at dividing each other. He says that's not a good thing. So he says, mend your ways. He doesn't say everything you've done is, is fine, but he's spoken the word of the presence of God. He's spoken the word of, of approval. He's spoken that tough word as well. But it's not something that he just kept inside and in his mind. And the third thing is that the blessing involves a firming touch. And this is what Paul says. We read it this morning. Greet one another with a holy kiss. That we don't greet one another with holy kiss nowadays. That's not a part of our culture. Usually what we use is a handshake. Sometimes it's a fist bump. Sometimes it's, uh, when appropriate, it's a hug. But it's a firming touch. It's in the touch that's communicated the approval. It's in the touch that's that's communicated the acceptance. It's in the touch that says, I believe in you. And the identity is, is transferred there. But not only that, the last thing he said, and this is where I want to spend most of our time this morning, is the blessing It acknowledges the presence of God, the blessing that it's spoken. The blessing includes a firming touch. And the last thing is it includes a hope, a hope of the future. And that's the way that he ends this book. The grace of the Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with you all. The grace of the Lord Jesus Christ the love of God and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit. Grace, love, and fellowship. That's the blessing. That's the blessing. That's the blessing that, that, that you and I, that we are to walk away with this day. That's the blessing we're to confer on others. The grace of the Lord Jesus. And that's the first thing that I want to talk about. Timothy Paul Jones in his book Proof tells a story about the adoption of his middle daughter. That she had been in the foster system before. As a matter of fact, she'd been adopted. But those adoptive parents turned her back into the system. And Timothy says that 
when they adopted her, they didn't treat her like she was a part of the family, not at all. As a matter of fact, when they, that family went to Disney World, they took their biological children, but they left the adopted daughter at home. So she never thought she was good enough to go to Disney World. So what the Jones family decided was that together, they would all go to Disney World as soon as she was adopted. Well, as soon as it was announced to the little girl, that's when the misbehavior began, that she began stealing little things around the house, that she began lying, and she began treating her siblings horribly. But they determined that no matter what, together as a family, they were going to go to Disney World. Well, the day came, they rode all the rides, they were worn out, they stood in lines for as long as they could take it. When they came in at night, they collapsed in the hotel room. And that's when she turned to the, re- the little girl turned to the rest of the family. She said, finally, finally, I got to go to Disney World. She said, Daddy, I finally got to go to Disney World, but it wasn't because I was good. It's because I'm yours. And that's what grace is. That you and I, we belong to God, not because we're so good, not because we've done all the right things, but because we're his. John 1, 12 says, but as many as received him, to them he gave the right to become children of God, even to those who believe in his name. That it's a relationship, a relationship where he's claimed us, he's named us, he's given us approval, acceptance, and identity. He's given you and me the grace of great blessing And he did it through his son, Jesus Christ. That's why it says the the grace of the Lord Jesus Christ. It's what he did on the cross for you and for me. He redeemed us. He made us right. And when we receive that blessing, we receive his Holy Spirit, that he lives his life through us with a power, a strength that we don't have on our own. Receive the blessing, the grace of the Lord Jesus Christ. And I invite you this morning, give that blessing to others as well. It's a future hope. It's a present, a present truth. Receive the blessing. Second thing that I want to talk about is Paul says... The grace of the Lord Jesus Christ and the love of God. The love of God, it's, a, it's a, a present future, but it's also a future hope. The love of God. Phil Robertson, star of the reality TV show Duck Dynasty, tells a story about when um, he set out fishing nets along the river that every once in a while he would notice somebody was coming by and they were poaching, they were stealing his fish. So at first he went around policing the nets to see who he could catch stealing his fish. But then he had read in Romans chapter 12, overcome evil with good. And so he decided to, to change. And if he caught anybody taking fish out of his nets that he'd left there along the river, that he would just pour all the fish into the person's boat and said, here, take them all. I want you to have them. And if you have a fish fry, make sure and invite me and my family. And if you need any more fish, I'll be glad to give you whatever fish you need. He said he discovered something that happened, that the more he offered to give away fish, the the less people stole his fish. That he was giving them a generous love, a generous love. And it's that love, the love of God. It's not a love that comes from us. It's not ability that we possess on our own. It's a blessing. It's a blessing given by the risen Christ that gives us power to love when um, we'd rather police. Gives us a power to love when we'd rather um, be vindictive. It gives us a power to love when we'd rather 
withhold. And it's the power of, to love that we don't have on our own. It's the power of God through the risen Christ alive in you and me. That you and I have been given great blessing and that great blessing is the love of God. It's a present truth and a future hope. And we've been given the love of God, not just to hold and to hoard, but to, to give to others as well. This morning, I want to invite you. Receive the power of the love of God and give it to others as well. The last thing that I want to talk about this morning is Paul says, the grace of the Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with you all. The fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with you all. Read a story about a, a woman, when she died, she filed her will. It was in Murphy, North Carolina, that a portion of her estate would be given, quote, to God. Well, the judge was having difficulty with it, so he assigned the sheriff to, to find God that he might be given the will on the, the woman's estate be transferred to God. That's when the sheriff reported back to the judge after a week, after due and diligent search, God cannot be found in Murphy, North Carolina. <laughs> well, that was because he wasn't looking in the right place. The, the presence of God is not in a building, it's in human hearts through his Holy Spirit. And what it says here is that the fellowship, that it's in the coming together. And fellowship that was a word that was often used for maybe a, a fraternity, a sorority, a brotherhood, a sisterhood, a, a group of people. That the way Paul puts it, do you not know that you are the temple of God and the Spirit of God dwells in all y'all, that it's in the coming together of two or more, that the presence of God, the power of God, the blessing of God, that it's in you. It's in you. It's not to be hoarded. It's not to be held on to. It's to be shared. You've been given great blessing this morning, approval, acceptance, and identity. The approval, the acceptance, and the identity of the risen Christ alive in you. Give it to others. Pray with me. Jesus, you give us strength we don't have. We don't have it on our own to give grace but because you've given great grace, you've given us power to give it as well. Lord, we don't have it on our own to give great love. We have a tendency to, to only want to give love once we've received it. But you've given us great love and, and through that you've given us power to give great love. Jesus, your Holy Spirit, it's not in buildings, made with hands. It's in the temple, the temple of God. It's in us. May we never take that for granted, but as a gift, as a blessing. Your presence in us, may it live with a power where the world knows who you are. Use us this day. It's in Christ's name we pray. Amen. Thank you so much for joining us online. It is a blessing to have the gift of technology to have sermon this way. We thank you for participating. And just a reminder, if you want to see the live services, 9 a.m. on Sunday for contemporary and 1115 Sunday morning for traditional services. And always we will have the full on-demand worship experience on Monday morning. 
And if there's ever a time that you would like to join us here at the physical location, we're located at 814 Mimosa Boulevard, Roswell, Georgia. We want to be connected with you. If you have a prayer request, please let us know by emailing pray at rumc.com. And we would love for you to be a part of our ministry through your giving. If you would like to support our campus and our ministries, you can do so at rumc.com slash give. And now hear these words of a benediction. Love without fear, serve with commitment. And in the name of the Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, go in peace. Amen.